Biomechanics is a study of mechanical principles that govern human movements such as forces and motions involved in walking, running, jumping, and other physical activities. It's an interdisciplinary field that combines principles from physics, engineering, and anatomy to understand how the body moves and functions. Biomechanics is used in many areas, including sports science, rehabilitation, ergonomics, and robotics. We're going to have a regression um, exercise here where we're going to try to predict the peak force during running, during a running stride. And we'll get some data from 10 different predictors or features in the data and then go down through this flow chart. Now this is a machine learning uh, flow chart where we're going to start at the beginning with an objective. What do we want to try to predict? In this case, the force of a runner and we want to be able to correlate that to these other variables. Now a coach might find that interesting uh, to help the runner be able to run faster or prevent injury. Now we're going to go through this process of first importing the data, developing some correlations, distributions, doing a data assessment as well. In particular, looking at the features that we've selected and determining which ones are most important. We'll do some data cleansing as well to remove outliers, scale the data, and then split it into just a train and a test. We're not going to do any hyperparameter optimization in this case. And then I'll show you how you can evaluate um, with supervised learning using the lazy predict function to evaluate all of the regressors that are in scikit-learn. So we're going to be going through this and I'll show you how to use this package to very quickly evaluate all of the regressors, select one that works well, and then evaluate it in testing as well. Okay, so let's go down through this. Um, we're going to, okay, as I go down through this, I'll go ahead and just mark uh, what, which one we're looking at right here, okay? So let's go ahead and just import the libraries. And we'll need NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib, sklearn, We'll import the standard scalar and then also select KBest. We're going to use that to determine which features are most important. We'll also use F regression. That's for the select KBest. And then also this lazy predictor. Now, if you don't have that, if you don't have lazy predictor, if it returns an error, then you can always insert a cell and then just pip install uh, lazy uh, predict. Okay, and then it will install it into your distribution. Okay, and once you're done with that, you only need to do that once. You can comment it out. Okay, so first of all, we want to just import the data. Now, this is some data that's provided by Ian Hunter from his biomechanics lab. So we're going to, first of all, just go ahead and get the data. And we'll read it with pandas from the URL and then look at the data. Okay, so here's the first rows of that data. I'm going to move this over just a little bit. Okay, so we can see the peak force. That's what we're going to try to predict. And we're going to use these 10 different values right here to try to be able to predict the peak force. We'll also rank these different ones right here uh, to figure out which ones are most significant and most highly correlated to the peak force. Okay, so these are the left leg uh, peak force. Uh, you have a knee separation, a center mat. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what all of these are, uh, but I believe this is from the hip flex. Uh, knee swing right here. And um, so we have some different things about the stride to be able to predict the peak force. Okay, so let's go ahead and just summarize the data. Let's look at it. Uh, we have a count, mean, standard deviation, and then quartile information as well. Now one of the things you'll see here is that many of these uh, minimum values 
are at negative almost 10,000. So it looks like there's some bad values here um, in, the, in the data that we're gonna need to remove. Okay, so let's go and do some data cleansing. We wanna drop some bad rows. If not a number is in there, we'll drop it, okay? Also, um, LGT, okay? Let's just say that has to be greater than zero. Filter out some of these bad values right here. All right, and then left knee swing. Now, if you plot this, you'll see that left knee swing, there's also some outliers there on the angle. And so we just say it has to be between zero and 150 on the left knee. All right, so I'm gonna implement that, just keeping all of the rows where the left knee swing is greater than zero and it's less than 150. And I'll create a box plot to identify any other outliers. And then let's go ahead and save the figure. Okay, so it's gonna create this box plot. You can see from the box and whiskers, like you can also see these circles up here where it's identifying potential outliers. It doesn't look like those are significantly removed from the top quartile. So I'll just go ahead and keep those in here. It looks like we have some values that have higher peak force, okay? But it doesn't look unreasonable right here just from a visual inspection. There are some statistical measures that you can use to help separate those out, uh, but we're just gonna go with this simple box plot analysis. So let's go ahead and scale and shuffle the data. So we had to, we imported the data, okay? We're looking at some of the distributions in terms of the box plot. There's some other ones that you can use for visualizing. And we're also doing a data assessment, okay? And then we're going to, um, we did a little bit of data cleansing as well to remove some of the outliers and bad data. Okay, so let's go ahead and scale and shuffle the data. So here's our data scaling right here. And we're gonna do this before we evaluate the features as well. So uh, there's another item right here, feature engineering. Uh, you know, if we need to increase data diversity, evaluate our data, we want to be able to see, you know, how, which features are going to be most important, but we wanted to shuffle it first. All right, I'll do that with pandas. I'll do data.sample and I'll keep all of them, fraction one, and then we'll have reset index and drop equals true. So it'll reset the index, it'll shuffle all of them. There's also a way to do that with sklearn and you can say shuffle equals true with uh, the the um, standard uh, split uh, function there that's in sklearn. But we're gonna go ahead and do this ourselves. So we'll have standard scalar and we'll fit transform. Okay, so here's our shuffled rows and we've also scaled our data. Now let's go ahead and split our scale data into train and test sets. And that's down here where we're gonna have a train and a test set. We'll have 80% that comes here in the train and then 20% that we'll save for our testing. Okay, so I'll split it into the X. Those are my features and then Y, those are my target values. And we'll just go ahead and uh, count the number of rows that we have and then take 80% of those, that'll be our split. Okay, so I'll have those for my uh, train, and then for my test, I'll have the remaining. Okay, so I've split it into these train and test sets. Now let's go ahead and do the feature ranking. So let's get our best features. We'll use select K best. We'll use the F regression, okay, function here. All right, and then learn the relationship from training the data. We'll fit it with the training data. And we'll scores, generate scores for the features. Okay, we need to get the column name so we can label our uh, chart. And then we're gonna print out all of the label names right here and also the feature scores. Okay, so feature scores and label names. And then we'll plot the figure 
with a bar chart with all of those scores just to see the magnitude of them graphically and we'll get the current axis and then we'll put in there the uh, x ticks and give them certain labels rotate them 25 degrees and save that as best figures okay so here are the best predictors right here you can see uh, speed and uh, LGT, SR, SL, okay, knee swing is high as well, uh, hip flex a little bit lower, hip extension or hip XT, oh, okay, so, and then knee separation and CM toe, maybe center mass toe, something like that, those are low right here, so less important for correlation to the final thing, which is the, um, the force, okay. And now we want, what we want to do is quantify the accuracy. And we could take those out if we wanted to, be able to simplify the model, reduce the amount of data that needs to get collected. Um, but we're just going to leave them in there for now. Okay, so now we have labels. So we can do supervised learning. And we can do classification like fast or slow. If we had specific bins that we're going to lump that into and discrete quantities but in this case we're going to predict a continuous number so that's going to be regression so let's use the lazy predict that's going to fit on all the regressors and there's our lazy regressor and then we'll save that to a csv file once it is done so it's going to take a little bit because it's going to run through about 42 different regressors some of them take longer than others and uh, we had quite a few rows here. If we go back up and just look at, um, you know, 2,600 rows. So some of those are going to take longer than others. And we'll see a timing thing on how long it took for each of them. Okay. And let's just keep going while this is uh, computing. After it finishes, we're going to pick one of the best regressors and then evaluate the test data. And be able to uh, generate a plot. Now, one of the things that Lazy Predict doesn't do well is it doesn't um, let you do hyperparameter tuning, for example. It doesn't let you do some of these things with a classifier regressor that you'd normally do. Uh, so, once we see the results, you know, we might come back in and do this hyperparameter tuning. There might be some other things that we'd want to do with uh, particular types of regressors. But let's go ahead and just do that while we're getting ready. Uh, K-nearest neighbors, uh, the regressor, is going to work well on this. I've already run it. Okay, so I'm going to select five nearest neighbors. I'll fit it just like I did with the data before. I'll create a prediction. And now I can plot the results. So I'll go ahead and create a figure, plot my... Uh, target values for the test and then also the predicted values and I'll make those red dots. I'm also going to put a black line on there as well just to show where perfect prediction would be. So this is a parity plot that shows um, the relationship between the test and the predicted. If it's right along that diagonal line then it means it's a perfect prediction. Now I'll put in some X and Y labels and save the figure and then we'll show it. So I'll go ahead and run this one after it's done. And just while it continues training here, it's going to take just a little bit longer. I'll go ahead and show you the, um, the course website and some of the material. If you'd like to get the Jupyter Notebook for this, you know, just come here to the biomechanic regression file. And you can see that you can download that here. Or if you'd like to, you can just run this through Google Colab. Don't forget to pip install any of the packages that you need, but it can run through your web browser without installing anything. All right, and this is one of the case studies. It's here down at the bottom on biomechanic regression. There are other case studies as well. Now this one, the, the flow chart that I showed you there, that one actually comes from the machine learning for engineers course so i'm going to go to the pds and you'll see the flow chart here 
with a little bit more additional information about this overall flow of um, curating the data and then preparing it for classification or regression. And there are also some modules as well on data engineering on how to prepare that and then on classification with some of the methods and then also on regression. And so if you'd like to get an overview of regression, I would recommend that overview here where you can also go through additional examples and get a little bit more information on what each of the regressors are doing and um, helps you adjust some of the hyperparameters and also understand some of the strengths and limitations of each of these. So here are some of the results for this case study and we're going to be evaluating all of these different regressors for our case study as well. So let's go back and see if it is finished now. So it looks like it is. Um, so let's go ahead and just see what uh, which ones are the best. We have extra trees regressors. Uh, regressor that is a 0.95 r squared you have the root mean squared error as well so very good on that one the time taken to perform the regression is fairly small as well looks like k nearest neighbors is very fast and its accuracy in terms of the r squared and the root mean squared error was also fairly low so we might choose that one just because of the computational efficiency it's very fast Okay, and as we go down, you can see some of the performance of the other ones as well. Linear regression, you can see that's kind of a go-to as a first pass for regression. You can see that it didn't do as well. Okay, 0.66, uh, much higher root mean square error, and but it was very fast, and it's typically what you know a lot of people go to as a first uh, view of the data to be able to understand relationships and uh, significance of some of these uh, features okay and you can see some of the other ones as well um, you know the ones that perform the best uh, are up here and so you'd want to pick one of those uh, for your implementation okay so that's it and then if I come down here I'll see the scatter plot on the test data so you could see at the higher measurements, it looks like the accuracy gets uh, is a little bit uh, lower. So you can see the scatter increases as the measured value increases. These are scaled values, so mean zero, standard deviation one. And uh, you can see it's not distributed evenly. You can see you know a higher range here on the high side than on the low side, but a much tighter cluster here on the low forces. So not as good at predicting at the higher uh, force values, uh, but it did an okay job uh, along here along this 45 degree line. Okay, so uh, that's it for this tutorial. Um, you know, I encourage you to you know use this uh, lazy predict package. It's very nice to be able to evaluate uh, very rapidly many of these regressors or classifiers for machine learning.